our first time and we were second in the world and first in the nation, that's a tremendous accomplishment and that wasn't just me saying it, that was other kind of national officials saying that too, so that really means a lot. Their secret to success should be no surprise coming from a school with UNLV's growing solar energy reputation. Solar decathlon is something that we found out about, one, just from our congressional delegation. They brought it to us and they said, this is something you guys should be going for. Um, we also just knew about it because this is something we're doing a lot in, in solar energy and renewable energy. While encouraging the collaborative and real-world experiences that lend so much relevance to a university education. It's really three things that are key to success. It's making sure that you have great students working on it and great faculty working on it with a great design. The university supports it and the community supports it. So we're looking for those opportunities for students to be able to learn, take what they learn in the classroom, take it outside and learn by doing and enhancing that experience that they have at UNLV. And the team seized on this opportunity to work with colleagues of all kinds in making their project complete in every possible way. It's, it's hard to get people to communicate with each other sometimes. Um, and that's something we learned in actually our design, building design process to really make an integrative design and so, such that it's not only aesthetically pleasing but energy efficient. Um, really, uh, engineers and architects need to work hand in hand with each other all the time. Uh, so that's something we, we implemented and I think we really implemented well. Well enough that the decathlon judges especially recognized how the formal and functional qualities were combined into one wholly satisfying structure. Sometimes engineering is not just about the big idea, the big innovation, but it's to make everything functional. So the functionality, the reliability, uh, all those plays into engineering. Um, and I think what got us placed so well is we were not only just thinking about engineering, but we we're really thinking about the design and building as a whole, as an integrative design. Which seamlessly incorporates even the systems that are essential to running the house. People have toured through our houses like, where are your solar panels? You know, it's actually that patio shading that you were standing under when you started at the, end, at the beginning of your tour. Uh, so how to integrate technology into uh, these architecture design is some, it's, it's challenging. But so that takes more of, you know, uh, the whole building design process and architect engineers talk to each other, work it out uh, to make these uh, happen. The cooperation continued on a remarkable scale as a team of highly accomplished volunteers contributed their time and expertise to bringing Desert Soul home at last to the Springs Preserve. There's a lot of different people in the community that supported, whether we had contractors supporting, you know, kind of their coming out and volunteering their time. And I think you saw that as they were placing the house out at the Springs Preserve, which was really great. You know, you saw some builders providing that support. Now that the house was nearly ready to complete its travels from Las Vegas to California and back, extra attention had to be paid to preparing for its final trip and flight onto its site in the preserve garden. Our site that we're putting it on, we had a lot of site constraints that almost prevented us from putting it in that true orientation because our requirements do not allow us to place it on top of existing utilities and we actually have some larger diameter 30 and 36 inch water lines in this area as well as a storm drain that gave us a very tight triangle that we could work inside to put the building and so it, it then became a game of trying to rotate a square object within a triangle and it doesn't work too well so there wasn't a lot of play but we made it we got it to work and it was worth every bit of trouble because of the need to orient Desert Soul exactly toward the sources of all its power and possibilities. It is very important which direction it faces because it has certain things built into it that account for solar energy. So it has to actually face in a certain direction. This house was, at, was designed as a residential house. So it would have all the amenities that you would expect it from a house that you were gonna live in, whether it's short term or long term. It has a kitchen with a fully functioning sink. It has a bathroom with fully functioning facilities. We're showcasing a lot of the leading edge in sustainability as far as building, not just for commercial where you see a lot of this, but now we're taking it to a level that you can see how it actually functions on a residential level. As well as how it's welcomed into a setting worthy of the home's Mojave desert roots. The landscape will really be reflective of the Springs Preserve, of the gardens that we have here, 
and of the collections that we're trying to build. Agaves and, and like Nolinas, some of these plants are going to come back into there, uh, Ocotillos, and then we're going to bring back in also many of the native plants, some of the native Joshua trees. That's one of the key plants that we, we keyed into because of the, just the icon you know, that that is for the Mojave Desert. Along with the symbolism and suitability of the plants, the landscape itself shares another significant relationship with the house. What we've done is actually brought in like a permeable paving, which also really integrates with what the house is too, because there is a, a, a feature of the house that is water harvesting, and the water that then comes off the roof of that house and off that footprint will then drain into this area and be basically infiltrated into the soils. In just one of the many ways the Desert Soul Project will continue to contribute to and benefit from its place of honor at the preserve. I think it's a partnership that will allow the, the house to, to live on and be able to talk about energy efficiency and sustainability and educate the public and, and kids about it, but also allow UNLV and the Springs Preserve to um, maintain a partnership as we continue to monitor how the house is doing and have students out there looking at that also. It just ties within the Springs really since the beginning, I would say. So I'm really glad this is a permanent home. It really fits well together.